Welcome back, everybody. It is UAP Tuesday, the big thing. And there is stuff to talk about, as always. There's a new documentary coming out, um, TMZ, that Jeremy Corbell is involved with. And I think it's interesting that TMZ is the one that's doing it with him. Uh, and we'll talk about that for sure, because then we'll even we'll show you guys the trailer in just a little bit when we talk about it. There is a major thing happening with a lot of the senators are going to be behind closed doors and they're going to get a lot of the information that Rush was talking about. But as Ross Coldhart and a lot of other people are saying, is it going to really mean anything? Because are they going to be a, a, are they going to be able to say anything or is it going to actually make them go, uh Oh, maybe we shouldn't tell anybody about this stuff. So we'll talk about that. And then yes, of course we're going to cover the Miami mall. Of course, Riley's shaking his head as I speak. Um, we have some stuff that people feel it's credible. There's other stuff that people say it's ridiculous. And we'll have the conversation. We're talking about the Miami Mall uh, alien thing. And we're also really excited because, as you guys have been watching the last couple of weeks, our buddy Pavel has been interviewing a bunch of people inside of the community. And we have him on the show today. He's our special guest. So um, myself, Mark Riley, and Pavel will be going over all this and more. We have other things we're going to talk about. And... Pavel has kind of reached out about the how consciousness is really a big part of this thing. And we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about that more on today's show. So if you're brand new to this channel, you've never been here before, hit that subscribe button. Get us to 200,000 faster than we got to 100 because we want people to be part of the conversation. But in order to do it, you got to hit that button. So if you stumbled upon this and you say, well, I want to talk about the Miami Alien Mall, then do it. Do it with us. Do all of these topics every week with us because we try to bring it in the perspective of we're just trying to find out what the hell is going on out there. Regular people asking questions. Um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. That's what we're doing on this show. So it's going to be me, Mark Riley, and Pavel. Here we go. What is going on, everybody? Big thing, UAP Tuesday. Myself and Mark Yodius Riley. Mark, I'm excited about our special guest today. I'm very excited to have Pat Pavel here. So uh, I'm excited to talk about three words I never thought I'd string in a sentence. Alien, Miami, and mall. Yeah. I mean, it, it's something that Spielberg would have directed back <sighs> in the day. But... um. Yeah, we're gonna we'll talk about <laughs> that for sure. And the reason I wanted to have Pavel on too is because like we, we met a lot of great people kind of through this community, right? Yeah. And obviously, I've known Attack Peter for quite a while, and, and Peter was kind of one of the first guys to reach out. He's like, "Dude, I'm so glad you're covering this stuff now. I'm so glad that we can talk about it because I have so many questions, and other people have so many questions." But Pavel was a guy who was a, a fan of ours from the pop culture stuff and yeah. and just things that we've been doing for a while and um and he reached out and he started he and I just started going back and forth on on Twitter and I mean this dude knows what's going on. He's like he's locked into it. And he and I are gonna start kind of working on a series together that I'll talk to you guys about at the end of the show. Um but I'm excited to have him. So without any further uh do to do, who do you do, let's bring in the one and only Pavel. What's up, Pavel? How are you? Hey, guys. Um, thank you for having me. Hello, Mark. Hello, Christian. Hello to all the community. I'm very glad to be here. Thanks. Yeah, too. We're glad to have you here because um, you have been kind of locked into this thing for a while. Let me, before we get started, how did you start getting interested in, in all this? And when did you start, you know, really start asking questions and wanting to know more? Well, uh, since I was a little kid, I started watching a lot of shows uh, here in Mexico. We have a we had a show called Otro Rollo, uh, which is like a talk show, kind of like the mm -hmm. Tonight Show from the '90s. And they had Jaime Maussan in one episode, and it freaked me out because he had uh, Jonathan Reed and his case, which is very famous, and it was debunked. Right. Eventually. And Jaime Maussan obviously is from for people who don't know it. There also was recently at the Mexico hearings. Where we've had, uh, you know, the bodies that have been presented. Jaime was the, the one who presented them. Sorry, Pavel. Go ahead. 
Yeah, he was. He's actually the first interview I ever did on the topic. Nice. And I've been a journalist for 14 years, but I've always followed this topic since I was younger. And in 2017, as pretty much anybody who's been on this for the last seven years, uh, that New York Times article blew me away. And it suddenly made it okay to talk about this on, on a more public setting, you know? Yeah. And since then, it's been it's been a riot. Yeah, and, and then some, right? Because we've got so... and and. That's one of the things that people will be like, hey, look into this. Make sure you, you, if you check this out, this interview just came out. Peter's very good at that. You know, you and I bounce this stuff back and forth with each other. Bella's been sending me and say, hey, look at this. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot that is constantly coming out. And are you shocked, Pavel, with the amount of stuff that continuously comes out like weekly? It's almost daily, though, because yeah. Uh, yeah. people in America, uh, they think, many think that it's only happening there. You know, right. but dude, it's it's happening in Peru. It's happening in the UK, in Mexico, South America. Something happened in Argentina a few months back. Yeah, and one of the most, uh, the biggest hotspots, and it's all mysterious. Like the government's covering it up, and it's it's happening all over daily. Yeah. Um. So we we constantly get this information. It's constantly new stuff that's coming out. And a lot of questions to be asked, and and a lot of topics to be talked about today. So, Riley, yeah. let's get into the first thing I actually really want to talk about is um, the stuff going on with the with the skiff and the and the information that's going to be yeah. coming out. Like, I'm going to start with uh, this article, and you know, before even you know, we'll, we'll Pavel start here too because this is, Pavel. Tell us what's what's the significance of the? Uh, I guess it's in the next couple of days. I was at the twelfth, I think, uh, when. There, what's exactly happening um, that we should be aware of? Uh, first, it was supposed to happen in the 9th, which is uh, it's going to be a, a classified briefing from the intelligence uh, community. And uh, the intelligence community inspector general, Thomas Monheim, mm -hmm. he's the one that's going to talk to the uh, Congress people about what Grush told him. And when the allegations first came out, he was the one quoted saying his uh, Grush's allegations are credible and urgent. And even if uh, many of those people are not going to be read in, so they can't know the information because they're not part of the uh, classified setting, um, Monheim is going to tell them, like in a nutshell, why they're so credible and so urgent. And that's what I think is going to be the most important aspect of this. We still don't know if it's going to be on the 9th or the 12th. Uh, Coldheart is uh, adamant that it's going to be on the 12th, but we'll have to see. Speaking of which, we have um, this interview that Ross Coldheart did from um, News Nation. So let me play that, and then we'll, we'll discuss it afterwards. Hi, Natasha. What do you expect will be discussed at this forthcoming meeting? And, and how will this closed door meeting be different than the public UAP hearings before? Well, there's a big question mark over how much the committee members are going to be allowed to hear, because pretty much everything David Grush has to talk about is protected by TSSCI clearances, top secret compartmentalized clearances. And the big question mark that we don't know the answer to is how much are the committee members allowed to be told of what David Grush knows? My understanding is that they have not been read in. They haven't been security briefed to be read into those co compartmented programs. So they're only going to be able to be told in the very broadest terms by the Inspector General of the intelligence community what he knows. But that nonetheless is still very significant because there is an opportunity here for the committee to finally find out what it was that convinced the Inspector General of the intelligence community, Thomas Monheim, that David Grush's allegations were credible and urgent and that's why he referred them on to congress on to the oversight intelligence committees yeah i want to follow up on that because the intel community's inspector general uh, who is conducting that briefing he has previously called david grush's allegations about ufos credible and urgent that is a much different tone than the official dod position that there's been no evidence of extraterrestrial materials discovered so far do you expect the uh, Inspector General will present any of Grush's evidence and even agree with Grush's claims at this briefing? 
No, I don't, to be perfectly honest. I, I don't think that the committee members are allowed to know the full extent of what the Inspector General of the intelligence community knows. There are people, witnesses, direct witnesses from the legacy UAP crash retrieval reverse engineering program, people who allege that they are directly involved working with non-human technology. Those witnesses gave evidence under oath to the Inspector General of the Intelligence community. And frankly, I would be very surprised, Natasha, if uh, that evidence is allowed to be presented to the non-cleared members of the committee. But at the very least, they can get an assurance from the Inspector General that he has done an investigation. And that's very significant because there's been a lot of evasion, as you rightly point out, by the Pentagon. They keep on relying on Arrow, the Pentagon's UFO office, to assert that there is no credible evidence. But when they say that, they're not speaking for the entire Pentagon. And frankly, I know because I'm speaking to people inside the Pentagon and inside the intelligence community, they know full well that there are whistleblowers who've come forward, who've given direct evidence, not only to the Inspector General, but also to the Senate Select Committee for Intelligence and the HIPSI, the House Permanent Select Committee for Intelligence. And the big question mark really, and I think the answer is no, is whether the committee members of the House Oversight Committee will this week be allowed to see that evidence in detail. I don't think they will be, but they will probably be allowed to know that the Inspector General did at least do his own investigation. And that's very important. All right. So I have a, I, I have a lot to say here about this because, Riley, I don't know, man. Like, as I just feel like they're like, okay, you know, let's put everybody in a room. If they were worried about this room, the 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 same people that you know blocked the or or watered down the Schumer and Round stuff, that they'd go, we cannot let this meeting happen. But instead, there it's yeah, let it let it happen. They're not gonna find anything. They're not gonna, they can't they can't get any, any access to it. So they're just gonna find out same kind of stuff, and then whatever it might be, nobody's gonna really report on it. It's not gonna go anywhere. They're gonna hear some stuff, and, and it's gonna go away. This this particular this particular thing it's not it's, nothing's going to happen with it but am i am i just being skeptical or do you think there's actually something that could potentially happen here well yeah no i'm kind of with you on that i mean it, it, the report is basically saying you know the inspector general is going to get some information everybody else is not really going to get the information mm -hmm. they're not going to get the the news they're not going to get like the veil so to speak is not going to be pulled back but i still find this to be incredibly promising I think that there is movement happening. This is movement. Um, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but um, I think it's important that it's happening and that it, depending on what's learned. Um, yeah, what, but will we find out what's learned or will we, they learn anything? I don't think we're going to find in, out anything. Right. But this is what I'm talking about. The, the promising part of it for me is that it's, it is movement. And this is glacier kind of movement happening in the UFO, UAP kind of world. We, we want things to happen now. We want to know what's happening now. And because there is so much stigma behind everything, um, these little tiny things that happen are a win. That's what I got to believe. All right, Pavel, where are you stand on this, man? Because like I said, Riley seems a little, bit, a little more optimistic um, than I do. To me, I just think it seems like, okay, they're getting in a room, they're going to learn some stuff, but they're not going to be blown away by anything in general. They're going to keep, it's going to, the powers, like I still always use that quote from George Knapp, that these people are better at what they do than we are what we do. Yeah. Um, what say you, where do you stand on all this? I do think we're kind of lucky that we have Matt Laszlo, who's been on the show yeah. uh, two shows ago, I think. Mm -hmm. He's going to be, along with John, John Khalil from News Nation, the only two guys that are going to be right outside right after it, it ends. And these two guys are very um, very specific. They, they want to be right there watching uh, the reactions of the people that, that are coming out of the room and try to get that gotcha question, you know? Yeah. And that's going to be key. But um, he told me, I've been talking to him about this for the last two days, he said it's it's kind of like 50-50 at this point. 50-50 really as far fifty fifty as far as what? As far as uh, either they're going to reveal something to them and based on their um, facial expression, 
he's going to know. And it's going to be that, yeah, 50-50 on whether it's important or not. What do you uh, think it's going to be, your gut instinct? I think uh, it depends on what Thomas Monheim says to them. If he relays the message uh, of why Grush's allegations are credible and urgent and they get it through, uh, between the lines, you know, because he can't reveal anything too specific, but the urgency that comes out of that from uh, from Monheim, it will make the Congress people act on it. Yeah, um, I like I like what you said there, Pavel. I like the idea that we can maybe judge the reaction of these people yeah. when they come out. Um, and now I'm going to be watching with like a hawk because I want that same kind of hmm. We're 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 following breadcrumbs right now, mm -hmm. Christian. It feels like, and if we can just kind of judge the cadence of their voice, you know, the look on their, I mean, I know, I know we're reaching, I know it's a little bit of a reach, but it's something. And I am, I'm, I'm gobbling this stuff up because this is the, this is the important stuff for me. The most important, this, this Senate transparency, getting our leaders, our elected officials in the know so that we can start to peel back that veil. So we could start to, to get some kind of information uh, like what are you, a highway of information, I guess uh -huh. you could say. Um, I want that so much. So Pavel, I'm with you. I'm with you, man. I want to see the reactions and I, and the the names you mentioned. Um, if they're outside the door there to get that gotcha question, I mean, maybe that's something we we can hang our hat on for a little bit. I mean, I I guess I guess you're you're, you're a lot more pessimistic on this for this one. Yeah, for this one, I get it for sure. I just think that I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think even Ross Colhart seems like he's a little bit like, I don't know what they're gonna learn there. It's like it's good that they're, yeah. they're getting behind the door, but like I don't know what they're gonna learn. Like what's, I guess it's where I'm at right now is like what's, what's the next like big needle drop? You know, like yeah. what's what's the next thing? Because the the biggest needle drop so far was the hearings. You know, like the hearings were were huge. Right. It was the one thing I was talking to my friend today who's um. Who's an, who's an editor is going to be helping us out with the new series I'll tell you guys about and and um and he was like I was telling him about some of this stuff and he was just fascinated by the stuff that he didn't know because he was interested in all of it Aaron Wilhelm yeah, yeah and yeah. he was interested in all this stuff and he's like how come I don't know about this and I was like because not sure he's like I know but he's like, I, he yeah, goes I know about the hearings he's yeah. like I knew about the hearings everybody knew about the hearings so it's like what's the next needle drop and it's like is it one of these things where because even so like you look at and this is something I'll throw to Pavel here too because Pavel had um it was on it, the last interview that we showed him Pavel had asked about the um the Marco Rubio of it all and Marco Rubio was such a like a big proponent of like disclosure and this and he's been silent and one of the suggestions Pavel is that on your on your show is that he maybe learned something that he was like holy shit maybe maybe people shouldn't know this and he's been quiet. Is that one of the potential fears of if they do, if these people do know, if Burchette does start to learn more and these people do, that they'll back off? Yeah. So there are basically two needle drops that I think are coming within the next two months. One of them is the op ed that David Grush is uh, putting out. It's mm -hmm. going to be on the first week or second week of February. I still don't know where he's going to write it, where he's going to publish it, but it's coming. And That's cool. he's just going to get it uh, passed through Dobser, which is like the the intelligence community's um, filter. Is that going to reveal – is now is that going to reveal stuff that previously he couldn't reveal? Well, he did say on Tucker that he does have first-hand knowledge. So yeah. he's going to say – he's going to reveal something. Yeah, I, I am 90% sure on that. Okay. And the other needle drop is going to be the whole – uh soul foundation uh video mm -hmm. which hasn't come out right and based on what i've heard that happened in there they're already treating this as okay guys this is real and this is how we are going to go about it uh to tell the people and whatever comes out of that i think a lot of people are going to be shocked honestly because there are some journalists that uh came into that soul foundation uh conference optimistic and they came out kind of pessimistic hmm. you mean pessimistic as if it wasn't like a thing anymore or no as if it so you mean got they okay. got scared okay so they were so they were more they were more they were less skeptical than they were more way more believers yeah but okay. scared but scared because mm -hmm. oh i see what you're yeah. saying like more so like the information that came out like 
oh, I'm getting closer to the truth, and I don't know if I really uh, love the yeah. truth. Yeah, they get weirded out by it. And uh, I can tell uh, uh, two people that I've seen talking about right after the yeah. Soul Foundation, I was like, okay, this guy learned something that really moved his whole reality, you know? Do you have a theory on what some of that stuff might be? I do have a running theory, but it's kind of weird. <laughs> what, what, what's, what's the running theory? And wh where does the theory come from? It comes from uh, a couple of people that I've been talking about, uh, talking to uh, off the record. Mm -hmm. uh, they, one of them is uh, he used to work on the fans uh, journalism. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to interview a lot of people from the defense industry, from the military industrial complex. And he started uh, actively pursuing uh, gravity propulsion basically which is like a like a unicorn and mm, and, yeah. and that kind of journalism and he suddenly switched his tune to the study of consciousness and the first time i heard about this was from bob lazar who has like a really detailed account of everything he saw and he he he's convinced that many of this craft are used through consciousness and that's where it gets really weird pilots because... it piloted through consciousness yeah, yeah, everything uh, inside the craft. So you're talking maybe yeah. like um, remote viewing kind of stuff, like that's you know, that's just I part can, of it. I uh, can try. I can control. Like I can. I'm I'm a avid hobbyist in in drone flying, so I have my own drone. But you're talking about I could fly a drone with my mind, kind of thing. That, using... That's where it gets really kind of scary for people because yeah. the reason I got into all of this, the reason I opened my channel is because of the study of consciousness mm. and for some reason it, it kept taking me to people who are within the ufo community Interesting. and it, I, I, at first i didn't think it was related but then it kept taking me to all those people and i was like okay there's something here it's related and the rabbit holes i've been in man it's we can go into more detail if you want but uh, i think we, we should do a a whole show about a full episode. Uh, I, I yeah. want to do that. Yeah, I think that's probably maybe it's a different episode. Dude, yeah. we, have, we have talked about that. You have brought this up num numerous times, Christian, and just your kind of, um, you know, having conversation and just saying, hey, what if and this, this and that. But, you know, dreams. Yeah. When you're, a, you know, when you're asleep and you're in a dream state, you know, and I've, I even have friends that are a little, you know, they're, they're out there, you know, and they talk about a uh, like a silver string that you're connected mm -hmm. to that um, is your basically your consciousness drifting out of your body. And if that is severed, you can maybe die, right? Um, that's very interesting to me. That's, that's stuff that I go, that's neat. That's a neat trick. That's, a, that's fun to think about. Um, but when you talk about dreams and when you talk about, and now, Pavel, you're bringing up consciousness, you know, that is something, for some reason, I can buy more than aliens in a mall, in a mall. <laughs> you know, sure, and, that, sure. and maybe that's just me. And maybe that's just wanting to be, um, you know, believe in a, a, a a bigger thing, right? You know, um, but but the human mind is is an amazing thing that we haven't even begun to, you know, really truly understand. And I think Albert Brooks was even onto something in defending your life right. when you know you go to the other side and he's like, "Well, I use thirty seven percent of my brain. How much do you use? Two. You use two percent, which is real, which is actually correct. Right. We don't use the full." Extent of, extent yeah. of our mind. We use a percentage, one, two, three percent. I don't know what it is, but that that intrigues me so much, Pavel, and makes me actually kind of perk up a lot more than aliens in a mall. <laughs> he's really <laughs> he's really against the aliens in a mall, and we'll get we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah, that. that's going to um, be in my running thing. Yeah, listen, it's it's that's a very interesting thing. Now, honestly, we were going to talk about this. This is what happens with this topic: is that originally this entire episode was going to be about the about consciousness and the theories of it and all that and and then these stories come out you know yeah, like, yeah. and and just things that need to be covered and that need to because i know and this is this is one of the goals of this show is that not news nation not these other ones that are covering it but the major news networks aren't covering this stuff mm -hmm. we know that and so it is for for now it's it's our job to be able to for this show, because that's what we've decided to do for the format of this show, and you guys have responded to it, is that the subjects and the stories that are coming out in this, to let you guys know about it, because maybe you didn't hear about it before. Maybe you did, or maybe you wanted to hear a different perspective on it. So that's 
kind of what we're doing here. But um, let's before we move on from this subject, is that where does it go? Right. Let me start with you. Where where does this go now? Where you know the next uh, the next phase of they get into a room, they find out information, they don't find out information. Do we get another hearing? Where, where do we go? Well, I, I, I think I go off of this report and then a little bit of what, Pavel, you, you mentioned with some needle drops upcoming. You know, I think that they could maybe learn some things. They can get some information and they can maybe be blown away and not say anything or they could say, bah, whatever, whatever it may be. I think there's going to be nothing. Right. And then the needle drops. Grush comes out and says something. Mm -hmm. It gets out in the consciousness, so to speak. You know, we get more reports. We get more whistleblowers out there. They're going to force the hand of more and more people that learn this stuff. I want to believe that. I have to believe that, that there, the more information that starts to spread within the community there, in, in whether it's Congress, trusted, elected officials, I like to say, mm -hmm. um, more information comes out. It's going to hopefully get people that are in the know, that are starting to get in the know, force their hand like, oh, Jesus, this is out now. This corroborates what I just heard. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it might take. Well, uh, Pavel, so then what about, you know, the, Riley, going over what Riley said, Riley is talking about, the, the as we mentioned, as you mentioned before, with the needle drop and and particular information coming out. That was the big thing. After the Chuck Schumer thing essentially was watered down, then everybody inside of this community, you know, from Jeremy Carbell, uh, Lou Elizondo, Gary Nolan, everybody's talking about, well, things are coming then. Things are coming. You know, there's other – that's when that Daily Mail thing dropped and other things. And so what what starts – how much credible – how credible is it, besides the stuff that you mentioned with the Grush stuff and um, the needle dropping that particular way – Lou Elizondo's been talking. What, what, what's your thought on Lou, first of all? And second of all, what's he going to do, if anything? Because he's been hinting like a lot of stuff's coming out and he's going to be doing more stuff. So what, what's your thought process on where he's going? Well, first of all, uh, Lou has a book coming out. Too, yeah. And he's also getting it approved. And uh, Dan Daniel Sheehan, who is yep. his uh, attorney, mm -hmm. he's been talking about it and – it's going to come out on the first quarter of the year. That's going to be revealing. But I do think that there's going to be an open hearing after this one mm. uh, because the, all the signs point at Col Colonel Carl Nell, okay. who spoke at the Soul Foundation. Yeah. He's going to, he said a lot of stuff in there, but it all points that he may be sitting on the, uh, in front of the committee and speaking publicly. Lou Elizondo will? No, Carl oh, Nell. Oh, Carl who Nell. Is, Carl Nell. Who is okay. far more important than any of the I ones see. that have I already see. come out. I see. Okay. Um, and you think that'll be – how likely do you think that's going to happen? I would put some money on it. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. So look. We need that. We, we absolutely need that. We need. I mean, that's – and that's what – and, and I put a link in the description for Pavel's channel when he's done the interviews, but I'm going to do it again here, and you should watch his full interviews. We just – we can't run the full interviews during the show for two reasons. One, it's on his channel, and you should watch it on his channel. And, and right. two, they're long interviews. He does these things. They're like full detail interviews for like an hour and a half, So and there's a lot of juicy information. So make sure you check out his channel. Um so I want to move on, though, as I mentioned, like Jeremy Corbell, and they have this this doc coming out with TMZ, and I want to I want to cover that. Yeah. Um, but before I do, I also want to tell you guys I've I've mentioned many times over, you know, our, our sponsors and how um, important it is that if you are able to that you're able to support the show that you can do one of the sponsors. One of our sponsors is Trade Coffee. I love Trade Coffee, and Trade is uh Trade is here. And it's to help you do more in 2024. You need trade if you want to hit the ground running with your New Year goals. It's a subscription service. that It sources the best coffee across the country, and it brings it to your doorsteps. And they've built relationships with other 55 local roasters, and you can enjoy their craft from the comfort of your own home. There's multiple ways to experience coffee with trade. And you sign up with a subscription or... Try one of their starter packs today. Riley, look at this one. This is the one that I'm I'm gonna start. This I know is I'm print. I'm, I'm a staring at it. Huge right? coffee drinker it's, here. You, so I'm you, now I'm, this is so convenient. It is so convenient. The delivery service is so convenient. Send your and it's fantastic coffee. It's fantastic coffee. It is so good. And I'm telling you, I want them to come back. If you like this show and you are supportive of this show and you love coffee, 
get yourself some trade. I'm telling you, get yourself some trade. It is absolutely incredible, and I can't sing their praise high enough. It is so good. It smells good, and you can jumpstart your year. Just sign up for a trade subscription right now, and they're offering a free bag with select subscription plans when you visit drinktrade.com slash big thing. That's drinktrade.com slash big thing. Get a free bag with select subscription plans. Do it. Drinktrade.com slash big thing. And while we're at it, also talk to you guys about Fume. I've told uh, you about Fume. Riley, yeah. you know Fume. This is cold turkey, right? Helped. Yeah. You don't you don't put it on. It's not, cold turkey's not good on the uh, on the hero sandwiches. But it is a, and there's no better way. You break your bad habits, man. <laughs> we're not talking about some, like, you know, a weird... It's not mind voodoo, right, Riley? From, yeah. It's it's you just have. When I told you about it, you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And we're talking about Fume. It's our sponsor. It's Fume, and they uh, they look at bad habits in a different way because not everything in a bad habit is wrong. Instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, you just remove the bad from your habit. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device, and it does just that because instead of vapor. Fume, use flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. That's what you liked, right? There's the flavors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the flavors. Uh, there was one that was like a uh, minty fresh one. Yeah. That gave me this like really nice kind of, for lack of a better yeah, term. Yeah. And it uh, it helped me just kind of drop the bad habit. And that's, that's the whole point of it, right? And that's exactly what we're talking about here. This, it, it, you got to try it. You got to try the new uh, Solano Fume. It's made with premium walnut barrel, and it's a, and an onyx-coated mouthpiece that has a slightly softer finish, and it is the best time to start the good habit with Fume because all orders between January 1st to the 14th have a buy one, get one course. You can stock up for that New Year's resolution plus. As a listener of the show, you get 10% off when you use our code. You got to head to tryfume.com slash big thing, but use the code big thing for an additional 10% off plus BOGO cores until January 14th to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Again, tryfume.com slash big thing. Save 10% off that journey pack today. All right. Thanks again to our sponsors. Again, both Trade Coffee and Fume. If you're able to, you have the means to, please, please. Consider it today. It helps out the show more than you can possibly imagine. And we are really trying to build out the audience. We're trying to build out the channel. We want to get the information out more. And I guess I'll just tell you right now what we're working on. I talked to Pavel about this today. And the second he was like, yeah, I'm down, we went to uh, my buddy, Aaron, who, who had helped me edit a bunch of stuff. And so what I'm going to start doing on this channel, and I'll probably drop it on uh, either Friday or the weekends, um, I want to do a series, and it's just going to be um, a series about the the who's who of this community. Like, who are these people? Like, who is David Grush? Who is um, Gary Nolan? Who is Jeremy Corbell? Who is uh, Alan Hynek? Who are all these people? And it's like a straight up, like, a, a refresher for people to know. Like, if you don't know all these people, that's what we want to do. So, Pavel, you you and I talked about this today, and I'm excited to have you on board with this this series. Yeah, it's it's so many people. Yeah. Uh, because th this has been happening since 1947, and we do have to cover a lot of ground, a lot of historic people who are no longer with us, such as, I don't know, uh, Dr. Stanton Friedman, who is one of the biggest names in the UFO community, uh, Bob Lazar, John Lear. Uh, those are the old school ones, but there's like this new uh, group of people who just came out after 2017. And they are they're doing a lot of interesting stuff that people need to know about it. Yeah. And so we're excited to bring that. We're going to uh, the goal is to uh, January would be amazing. Uh, most likely February is when the, the first one will drop. We're going to do um, quite a few. And if you guys respond to them, we'll keep doing them to get everybody on board with it. I told Riley about it. Riley was like, yeah, that's stuff I want to learn about. Yeah, I, I, I could actually use your video yeah, for right. myself right. because there are so, so many, many names, names out yeah. there. Right. Um, it is it is sometimes hard for me just with things going on to, to keep it all straight. 
So look out for that. We'll be doing that um, sooner than later. And speaking of things that are dropping, and I didn't know it was coming, that's this uh, documentary from uh, – what did I? Th- I didn't say Netflix. Did I say no? Uh, no, it's TMZ. Uh, TMZ. Yeah. So this is. Let me let me show the um, the trailer itself, and then we'll um, then we'll talk about it on the other side. You've said that the U.S. has intact spacecraft. You said that the government has alien bodies or alien species. Have you seen the spacecraft? What I personally witnessed myself was very disturbing. It has been since the inception of the UFO problem. Nothing to see here. All of that. All of that has changed. A multi-decade UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program. A genuine disclosure of the UAP UFO subject would be the most earth-shattering thing imaginable. It would be the biggest story in history. The biggest story, period. Here was a phenomenon that the government couldn't protect us from. The greatest superpower the Earth has ever known basically admitted there was no way they could defend themselves. I don't trust the U.S. government, and I'm a United States congressman. They told me that I'd kicked a hornet's nest and I needed to get some bodies around me. This information is the most deeply held secrets in the entire government, and that includes the President of the United States. Do not talk about these things or things will not go well for you. This is like the mafia. Have anyone been murdered? I have to be careful asking that question. The attacks on you, is there any moment where you regretted speaking up? You know, I don't, yeah, regret it. It's, you know, I didn't want to live in the matrix when there's stuff like this that's being hidden from the world populace. Past the foot of my bed, there were two gray non-human beings. The aerospace defense companies, these are people who understand how to play high-level chess. If somebody's going to walk out of one of these labs with this information and puts it out on the internet before they commit suicide by shooting themselves in the back of the head five times. The footage was captured by our military. It's in Iraq. It was treated with just spectacular secrecy. Just be careful, don't step on the wrong toes. So I've got a still image of something that I have learned to be called the chandelier UAP. Does that ring a bell to you? It does. Do you think Chuck Schumer would put forward an amendment about UAPs and disclosure, putting the reputation of the entire Senate at risk with the upcoming election. I mean, I don't know how much more one needs. This subject is a problem. It's a problem they can't control. I know for a matter of fact that the UFO topic is considered more important at a higher level of security than weapons of mass destruction. This is potentially world conquering information, technology that can change the course of mankind. society that has lived a foundational lie for an entire human lifetime. I don't know what gets bigger than that. To keep things secret, people are silenced. I don't know how that's better to out, say that. Uh, tomorrow, oh, today, today, from, from when we air this, that's coming out today. So I'm in. Uh, yeah, so look. That's this, a good trailer. It's a great trailer. So this is this is where I stand on that trailer. It's a fantastic trailer. Yep. It is. There's there's a there's a lot more than I like than I dislike, mm-hmm. but there are a few things that I dislike. Okay, and I'll start with that. And this is just it's an editing trick. Oh uh, yeah. But I, the first thing that they do when they start and they ask him about when Grush when he asked him about the you know they say the okay, non-human craft. The, yeah, and he goes, I, I feel uncomfortable about that. That's not what he was talking about. Yeah, they what he was pulled it out yes, of se- what, sequence. Yeah, what he was talking about in that moment was when about things that made him uncomfortable was they had asked him if there were threats against him. Yeah. that's what he said in that particular moment. So they edited that to sell it a little bit, yep. and that's fine. I get it. That's what they're doing. A lot of the people, the, the average viewer isn't going to pick up on that, but it just makes you go, okay, it's TMZ produced, so they're really trying to build it out, and you can tell the music as they're building up to it. Yep. 
Um, and there's a few other times that they that they had done that, and then they also said that the U.S. has a UFO problem. No, the world does. That's 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 part that's part one. Well, they know their target audience. Yeah, least, and, you know. and they're also talking about the and they're really the whole documentary. If you look at it, it is about the U.S. government and the cover up inside the U.S. So that's why sure. they they did that the way that they did. But that's really the majority of it. it's just the edited and what they're trying the way that they're manipulating it. Right now, when you look at the Netflix doc that we just watched recently, the Encounters one, right? Yeah. That show was made for the absolute casual fan that was coming across something and said, what's this? And they learn about these things for the first time. For right. someone like Pavel, mm -hmm. I guarantee you if he watched it, and I'll ask him in, in a second, and you can respond after, you know, when after I throw this to you. But mm -hmm. Encounters, I bet you he knew about all of those encounters. I bet you he knew about everything left and right about everything about that because the experts knew about it. That wasn't the intent of that. Mm -hmm. This is not that. This is Jeremy Corbell because if Jeremy Corbell starts covering stuff that people have seen a million times over, it's like, well, yeah, we knew that already. Someone else mm -hmm. covered that, Jeremy. What are you doing? But he's got that one scene where he's talking to the, the to the military guy and he's like, have you heard about this? And there's the that chandelier. Yeah, the chandelier. And then yeah. there's the pause. He's like, yeah, I know about that one. So in the same way that it's not um, – uh, a surprise that Lou Elizondo is out there promoting his book and said, well, wait a minute, I'll tell you right around the time my book comes out, it's the same time where Jeremy Corbell has been holding back on stuff and not revealing stuff on his podcast or other things because he's got this movie coming out. Yeah. So, Bevel, let me ask you about this, man. So what do you, what do you think? Is this, is this going to be more of a fluff thing or is this going to be something that actually, again, you know, is a needle dropper? And what do you think of the overall trailer? I... I was surprised that the mummies made it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw, yeah, me too. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, uh, you know, Jaime Ozan has his, uh, he's pushing this really hard. There's a reason for that. But uh, the trailer overall, I think it's going to, it seems like it's going to cover everything that's happening. So uh, even the, the mushroom cloud from mm -hmm. the, from the explosions, uh, but I, I do think that Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, they always keep some cards, uh, some aces under their sleeves, if you may say. And I think they're going to release some stuff that people have never seen before. Because uh, we, we got to remember, George Knapp has a whole library of videos and stuff in his ho house in Las Vegas. And there's a lot of stuff that he doesn't want to share still, but... You know TMC. I mean, those guys are everywhere. They yeah. pay for everything they 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 get, and they pay good money. So, I think I'm excited about it. But it's TMC too. You know, uh, they're they're known for their gossipy yep. stuff. But yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting to say the least. He brings up a fantastic point, Riley. Yeah, TMZ pays a lot of money for this stuff too, right? Yeah, and where the mainstream media is dropping the ball so badly with not only and, and, and you look at it as a business side of things right you look at news nation as we mentioned you know it, if you go to news nation you look at the news that's out there right now the clips that they put out about wh again whether it's uh, any of the wars going on or whether it's about anybody in politics they do okay but because they're really the only big news outlet covering this those videos are are in the hundreds of thousands all the time. Right. So TMZ is probably going, well, wait a minute. Let's get in on this. Yeah. Action. Hey, Jeremy Corbell, I'll tell you what, we'll pay yeah. you to do the doc for us. Give us all the information. We'll give you your we'll give you the resources. And because what Pavel said, where and I everybody did the same thing. What's well, TMZ doing it? But what if TMZ has the most legit doc? They put some credibility on their name. If they do, if they actually break it, so it's you can point. look, you can look at it that way. You can. Why not? Why not? I mean, TMZ. As much as you want to maybe hate on them, or or you know, they they could be paparazzi, and they can. Well, they, 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 could, they are paparazzi. They, they are paparazzi. <laughs> yes. No. But I'm 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 saying like they could get in on. Certain things like, you know, I saw a disgusting report from them about Matthew Perry right when he – Right. Like, that they yeah. were the ones that broke it before his family even knew. Yeah, I mean that's right. what they do. If they can break something before the mainstream media knows anything, right. like a UAP things, I wouldn't put it past them. So begrudgingly, I will say, yeah, follow yeah. this. Let's see what they have to offer. Is that – 
a possibility also, Pavel, is that they say, okay, look, yeah, look, we're going to put this out there. People are watching it. They're excited about it. We're going to make money off it. So if people don't give a shit, if they don't, if it's, if they don't, as long as people watch it, this is, again, TMZ's perspective. We don't care. As long as people are watching it, we don't care if they take it, if the mainstream takes it serious or if we get the stigma out. That's not why they're making it. They're making it to to get eyeballs on it, whereas I think Jeremy Corbell, obviously, and George Knapp are doing it to get the word out and to get more legitimacy out there. But where do you – in when this thing lands, and again, it lands today from when we air this um, – is this going to do anything or is this just going to be like, no, no, this in the same way that the documentary that I found on National Geographic that really got me into it and other people have found certain things, is this going to be another piece that people go, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what's really happening. TMC gets a lot of flag, though. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do uh, get a lot of sensationalist stuff out there. But people often forget they get a lot of world exclusives. Yeah. It's true. Like, for example, let me give you an example. When Kobe Bryant died, mm -hmm. may he rest in peace, they got the first story out. And I guarantee you, when they were on, this, on the table with Jeremy, they wouldn't pay uh, that kind of money if they are not getting some kind of exclusive that is, is going to be, like, wild. Right. They're not going to just do, like, a Netflix doc. Like I said, yeah, because, no. because, because that, doc, that, that Encounters doc, did, A, did you see it? And B, did you know all the, all the cases? Yeah, I did know uh, all the cases. I I didn't know some stuff about the Japan right, cases. Right, me too. Me too. Which was really, really wild yeah. too. But yeah, I know. I knew pretty much all, all of those. But yeah, uh, TMC, they're not gonna pay that much money if they're not gonna get some meat. You know, like yeah. they have to get something out, some some exclusive out. Well, it comes out today, guys. So make sure you check that out. Um, and we'll talk about. I'm sure we're going to talk about it next week. Yeah, I mean, it'll be it'll wanna... be the conversation that we're going to have um, next week. We'll we'll really dive deep because especially if something comes out, I'm sure next week's going to be pretty packed because you're going to have if there was potential information that came out of this um, meeting that everybody's having. If there's more news that potentially drops, you know, uh, th this new doc, all that, and who knows what mall these things are going to show up to soon. Um, <laughs> but before we get into that story. Which we are gonna probably end the the, the show with because I know that uh, uh, both my panelists have a have a lot to say about it. Um, I want to tell you about real quick two more of our sponsors, and let me tell you about Nutrafol, man. Everybody thinks you're like, oh, hair thinning, man. It's not inevitable. It really isn't. You take control of your hair's future before it's too late with Nutrafol's clinically tested hair growth supplement for men. So Nutrafol, it's it's it works. It's it's the bomb. I use it. You should too. I'm telling you. It's it's something that uh, has my wife was like, look, it, it's working, hair thinning, shedding, hair issues. I've seen growth, and you know it's that the kind of that dis, that decrease shedding. It's it's neutral. It's helped. I take four pills daily. Take it with a meal. It's that simple. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair, like Riley's hair. You get thick hair for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men. you got to enter that code, though. Big thing. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men. Nutrafol. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men. Use that code. Big thing. Finally, i got to tell you about AG1. I've been telling you guys about AG1 for a while. Did you start AG1 yet? What's AG1? Oh, stop that. I got to tell you about AG1. AG1 is the best because taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should be simple. And that's why for the last two years, I have been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. Just one scoop, you put it in a bottle of water every day, and it makes me feel energized. I'm focused. I'm nourished. I'm strong. I'm ready to take on the day. It's because it's awesome. It's awesome. And each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit, and it's also very simple. What I do is I wake up, and I have one of those packets. I put it in um, – I've got this Zoo Cup. Mm -hmm. I love this Zoo Cup. And I put uh, the AG1 because I don't – I can't take 75 vitamins. I just can't do it. It's all <laughs> – it's all because people take all these vitamins throughout yeah. the day. And I, take, I just one. Put it in a packet. You shake it up. Extra cold water. One scoop. That's it. If I'm running short on time and I can't mix my AG1 before I head out, I just take, take the travel pack. 
and each is an individual serving of AG1. It's easy to mix on the go, and it helps me ensure my daily nutrients no matter what. I did it on when I did the big thing live shows and in the stand-up comedy show. It's like I have them. I'm good to go because if there's one product that I have to recommend, I recommend this all the time. If you've been watching my show long enough, you know I've been AG1. And I partnered with them for such a long time. If you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. You got to try AG1. You get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, NK2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash big thing. AG1.com slash big thing. Check it out. I'm telling you. Um, before you go, I'm going to give you AG1. I want that. You no, I need that. that. You will love that. I'm going to give you some. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, it's the moment of truth, everybody. It is the alien mall attack in Miami. <laughs> attack, the incident. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't even know the full report. I mean, all I know is that I'll be honest, and I, I know, and maybe this is one of those things like the Peru stuff, where I maybe I just dismissed it so fast, and everybody's like, "Hey, man, you need to look into it before you start dismissing it." Um, but. The, all right, so you guys can correct me where I'm wrong here, but there was like a it was was it New Year's? What, what was it? Was it just it was just I don't know what it was, but it, it was, was a few days ago, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Something happened in the um, in Miami, and there was apparently what they say is that these kids kind of caused a riot, and then they sent every cop in Florida <laughs> to Miami, and the people yeah. were going, "Well, it's because there was a there was a creature, there mm -hmm. was a creature running around." And we saw it, and tons of people saw the creature. So, the aliens. Yeah, saw the aliens. So well, before we even talk about it here, I want to play this video. This is from somebody that said they, they were there. Mm. So here's this video. This guy, I'm not going to play. I'll play. This is a shorter, short, shorter video. So Pavel sent me a shorter video. Here, here's one of the guys who apparently saw... The thing in uh, in Miami. Um, but what happened, we all saw what happened, and, it, you know, it's pretty serious. I, uh, you know, I'm, it's been a few days, but, and, you know, our whole family's processing it, but I think we've kind of, like, uh, accepted that we were a part of this weird uh, experience and moment. Um, so basically what happened was I was there with my brother Brian, uh, and my sister and my nephew. We were looking for shoes uh, for my nephew. And then we see a whole crowd of people outside the store um, just running out in a direction. So, you know, as soon as we saw it, we uh, we were like, oh, oh, shit, you know, what's going on? So we immediately ran out with our nephew and um, you know, we picked him up and we ran out and we followed the crowd. Uh, and then about like a, a, a few seconds later, as soon as we started running, uh, my nephew, he's autistic. So he was pointing behind us and he was saying blanky which he'll usually say whenever he feels unsafe or scared. Um, and he was pointing behind us. So me and my brother, we look behind us and then we see these three, nine, 10 foot tall creatures. I'm not gonna say aliens. Uh, everyone keeps saying it's aliens. I'm not saying aliens because I don't know what it was. Uh, none of us really knew everyone. All of us stopped in our tract, we, you know, a whole bunch of people were pointing at it. I, I mean, there were other people running. Um, you know, there was a crowd. As soon as it made itself more apparent, um, it looked like it was glitching. Not like a computer pixelation, but like a wavy glitch. Um, and whatever maybe was covering them had, you know, unveiled or whatever. Um, yeah, it looked like a glitch, man. Uh, it like a, a weird glitch in the matrix or whatever. And, um, and then you could see it in its full form, all three of them. And then, uh, it, you know, they were all black. You saw eyes, uh, and you could faintly see like, like lips. But, um, yeah, I was about like tw 20 feet away. Um, because obviously everybody gave it distance. Right. And, um, you know, they're tall. Um, so we all just like looked at them they were just standing there and the thing that was a little bit weird well it was clearly like observing us it was sentient right like or whatever i mean i don't know but uh it was aware of us it looked at us the whole crowd 
And then as soon as it started walking with its big legs, like kind of like it started like almost glitching again, um, we all ran. Um, my brother like immediately said, yo, let's go. He grabbed me by the shoulder. We, we bolted out of there. And for anyone that's like saying, you know, where's the footage? Where's the footage? Yeah, I know. I, I don't have any footage and I'll explain why. Cause like when I, when I saw it, I was in complete fear. It's, it was something that I, I completely froze, man. I don't care if I sound like a bitch about it. Like I froze and I don't care who you are. I feel like when you're seeing something paranormal, it's different than when you're seeing a fight. Yeah, you'll probably want to record that and put it on World Star or whatever. When you see something paranormal, that's different. Because your reality, you can't comprehend what you're seeing. A fight, you kind of get it. Two people are fighting. You, you can comprehend that. Something like this, none of us could comprehend. Your first instinct is like, it ain't to like take out your phone and start recording. Your first instinct is like, I've never seen this before. What is this? Is it going to hurt me? Okay. So here's here's where I stand with this. Um, I, I I don't ever want to call anybody a, a, a liar. I, I don't yeah. I don't know. But I, I was going to say straight off what he said at the end. Now, maybe he very well. Maybe he was scared and he didn't shoot whatever he was seeing. Okay. With his phone. There were that many people. Yeah. Not everybody's going to feel that way. Right. Not everybody. You can't speak for everybody that, you know, there are people that have been in pretty terrifying situations, not just a fight on World Star, terrifying situations that people have caught footage of because they knew they, they had to. Someone would have gotten something. Um, now, this isn't one of those things. Now, I'm usually, the people say, well, how come there's not more footage of the of the UFOs in the sky? And it's like, well, these things are moving at a, a certain kind of speed, and the way that they, they do it, it's hard. It, or you a, know what you're seeing. It's gone. It's an alien running around 20 feet in front of you, you pick up that camera and you take a picture of it or you do something else. Nobody had one. So I, I, and it's like the one shot they said they saw of the thing, it was like three people standing next to each other walking. So, and then the other things, well, why is there every cop here? Here's what I think potentially happened in this one. Um, that if there was indeed this riot and there was looting and all these different things that happened, they're probably because of the way that the world is at the moment and with shootings happening all of the time and people also, you know, towns being scrutinized because their police force didn't right. react in time. There you go. Um, they said, send them all. And they said, who? And like, Gary Oldman, everyone. Send everyone. <laughs> send everyone. Because it's like right now we we're not messing with this. We want to show how come you didn't send? Uh, why you didn't respond in time? Didn't respond in time. We sent Florida. Yeah, you know it's like so. It just this one doesn't doesn't add up to me. And we're gonna get the two major skeptics talking about it first, and then I'm sure because as I said in the beginning of this, Pavel has read up on this tremendously and probably has counterpoints to a lot of this stuff. And maybe and maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's on the same page. I don't. I haven't talked to him fully about it, but I know he's okay. a lot to say. But Riley, you came in about this one hot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, I I echo exactly everything you said there because um, I I saw that video. I saw another guy's video. I saw a number of videos of, of people claiming there were twelve feet tall aliens, and then I watched um, a, a police response, uh, an actual police officer saying the shadows, the twelve, the the. The twelve foot tall aliens yeah. were actually shadows, and here, here they are. He showed a picture of them in motion, and I looked, and I mean, yeah, those are shadows, you know, because there were a lot of police cop cars there, and the lights are going, and people are running alongside those things, and the shadows are being, you know, projected on the wall. Right. Um, I had a problem a little bit with that video because it, it appeared the the gentleman on there was kind of looking off and almost reading. Okay. It, it, it felt to me he was reading something, yeah. which conspiracy hat on, the tinfoil uh, foil hat on. That's interesting. Sure. Right? Um, but I think it's this kind of stuff that um, we do live in a world. And um, for, based on the, the investigating this thing, you know, there was a, what the cop called juveniles mm -hmm. uh, shooting fireworks at people. And, um, you know, the loud pops that you get from that 
can be misconstrued as gunshots. Mm. And this is in a very populated mall. Uh, this could have been um, seen as a horrible, horrible uh, shooting where we have one every day, it seems like, in America. And so the huge police presence absolutely makes sense to me that they would be there for a mall that has reports of gunfire. Because, well, because, sorry to cut you off, but the other thing is, you make, as you make that point, it's like if, if it was anything but that, You've had reports of UAP showing up and fighter jets are there within seconds. Right. Where, where why is it just the, the cops? Why is it just Florida cops? Why right. isn't it if if there's reports of anything, why why aren't there like the black SUVs and just like everybody, you know, like it would be everybody. It wouldn't just be the I mean, I don't know. Yeah, and this it listen, it's also something that it just what what why I came in hot is because I, I went down that rabbit hole and I saw numerous videos of, you know, people saying, well, this is this is definitely a conspiracy, and this is, why is this, why is this? And no facts to it, just kind of throwing out whatever's going to stick to the wall. And it's this kind of stuff that takes away, in my opinion, from what we're trying to do here, and that's find transparency through our government. What do they have? What's in the skiff? What is Grush talking about? This kind of stuff <clears throat> will get out to the layman, and they'll go, eh, this is, this is come on. They, they, you know, maybe they're, they're not going to immediately believe it without facts mm -hmm. behind it. And I think it perpetuates what we're talking about. You might as well have called it, I saw a dragon fighting a wizard. Right. Well, you know what I mean? And that's what is taking away from me the real work that we're doing, and that's trying to get the government to reveal what the hell is up there, what's going on, what do they know. And people are talking about aliens in a mall. You know, and that's that's tough and hard for me to believe until I get more facts and maybe Pavel, you have some something yeah, that I'm, can I'm, change my mind. That's where I want to go with it because because I know Pavel has really dove deep into this. So are are we missing something? Are we are you like, hey guys, you guys aren't really paying attention to this the way that it that it really should be? There's other facts, or are you more on our, our on our side of things here? Uh so um spoiler alert, I'm on your side. Okay. But <laughs> Uh, I do work at a newsroom, like a regular one. Yeah. So when this happened, it happened on January 1st. Oh, well, I started news. looking at it and I started following it up and seeing all the different accounts and everything. And I didn't even suggest it as an, as a news article because, uh, I have to, it's my job. I, I, I am the traffic manager at the newsroom. So, uh, I have seen all the videos and everything, but many accounts from the police uh point that at uh, just a brawl between teenagers and yeah. possibly a shooting yeah which is the most uh logical explanation to it however uh you know i do like to dabble into the um imagination you know sure uh, let's put it that way sure uh they were talking about uh, this guy specifically his account uh, it was interesting to me because he was very clear he said I i'm not gonna say aliens i don't think they're aliens they are creatures and they are shadow beings as in and they were like kind of like facing in and out of um uh, the f their the vision you know and that's what was kind of interesting to me because mm -hmm. every single account that I saw describes the the same thing. I'm not saying it's true or anything, but it is kind of strange to me that so many people, uh, maybe it was just for clout, maybe, I don't know, but they're saying the exact same thing. It's shadow beings not specifically aliens. They, they couldn't even tell what they looked like. They just said they were really tall and dark. That that was about it, you know? I just think it's a nice science fiction story that we can get past and yeah. just focus on what we're doing here. Yeah, Pavel, it, it, let, me, let me ask, when you say um, it kind of corroborates what other people have said, is that people at the actual mall or the event in question yeah, or I just about, in... i saw about 20 20 accounts of people that were at the mall 
one of them said that there was kind of like a portal that was opened, which mm. was really wild. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and, yeah. And yeah. It, and yeah, they, they, they all say they were at the mall, but you know, it's Twitter. Twitter became like a cesspool of yeah. disinformation. Yeah. It's somebody so, who just watched Stranger Things season three is what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, that's why I didn't even propose it as a news article in, in my day job. Because it's, that's it's too, it's too much info that can't be corroborated. So let's just leave it alone. Yeah, yeah. For and that's now. that's now. that's what For I was now. wondering too when you were when you were saying that and if, if if it was corroborating Evans uh, other people and and I'm wondering if there could have been just you know a a, a mass let's F with people kind of thing. It felt that video that we watched, um, there was a number of times he kind of looked off and then he, he said something like almost like he read it and went, yeah, phasing, you know, and yeah. it, it just, it, 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 some stinks to you. It, it just kind of, it got my hairs up. Like yeah. uh, that didn't ring true to me. And I, I, I want believe me, I want it to be true. And I, I have know. heard of I this. I don't stuff. know. I don't know if I want that to be true. Well, I, I want the <laughs> <laughs> I want the transparency. To, uh, uh, I want the evidence yeah. to be forthcoming, real, transparent. Right. What, whatever have you. I yeah. Do I want shadow beans in my world? Yeah, no. Be a big big thing. Running but around. I have heard that before. Yeah. I've mentioned many times. Pavel, you've heard it here. Christian, you've heard it yeah. here. My friend Kai, who believes he's been, um, you know, abducted. He he has mentioned those kind of things as well look which i believe is something sure. so i'm wondering if other people are reading this online right that guy's looking off I, I and they decide to yeah you know make it a new year's prank i don't know i'm sure a lot of people are gonna have a lot to say about this yeah. um i don't know where you guys stand on it again i i if there's other information that we're not paying attention to that you think is absolutely um something that we should Please tell us. Yeah. Tell us in the comments. Let us know for sure. Um, but for me, it just it just I in an event like that, not in the sky, but on the ground with that many people, that many, and they're gonna get every single one of those police officers to shush and not say anything, and all the people around not to say. It's it, it that that one. I, I can't believe that it actually even carried the kind of weight that it. To be, to be completely honest with you, it's, it's I, a viral moment that that, that happens on uh, social yeah. media. And Pavel, yeah. you said it. I mean, Twitter has become something a shadow of its former yeah. self. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's also but it's it's the Twitter. I mean, I think he also means like the, just the UFO Twitter. Like it's not. It's like there's people because it's becoming more of a talked about subject. Is that people? Just, I mean, I saw something today. Like, look, this is the most realistic footage I've seen so far, and it's the most stupidest thing I've ever seen. Right. Like somebody just made it in their garage five minutes ago and with a bad Photoshop. Um, so I don't know. Those things are out there. The stuff that we want to talk about is the stuff that we open the show with. And yeah. the documentary that, you know, Jeremy Corbell is going to do as well, too. So yeah. what actually – that kind of information that's going to come out. So that's really what we cover. We'll talk about stories like this for sure because I think yeah. that it's, it's important, too, because you never know what is going to happen, what's not going to happen. And we, we want to discuss it all. And we're glad that you guys were able to – Join us. Um, I want to thank our special guest, Pavel, here today. Pavel, you tell the, the people where they can find you, your channel, and, and what guests you got coming out. Okay, so um, before I do that, though, I do have to say about the, the Miami Mall. Sure. We have a lot of people in Miami that work for my day job yeah. that actually live there, and they could have been there trying to report on it. But they were all on holiday, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was really frustrating to me. I was like, damn, dude, Alien just invaded Miami. And, you were, <laughs> and you're you on vacation. In, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you were in Indonesia. What the hell? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, my channel is called Sico Activo. Uh, it's on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, I do have uh, coming up some interviews with... All, Author Nick Cook, who wrote the best-selling book, uh, The Hunt for Zero Point. Uh, I am also going to talk to Daniel Sheehan. Mm -hmm. I am hunting uh, Gar Dr. Gary Nolan, who's, he already confirmed to me that we're, we are going to talk, but he's been really busy lately. Uh, same thing with uh, Ross Coldhart and James Fox, the documentary filmmaker. Sure. They are all like on the line to speak to me. 
And you can find me also on Twitter at Pavel Ibarrameda. And we can discuss anything you want there uh, about this, about uh, movies, about sports. Uh, I like to dabble in everything. And all of his stuff will be linked in the um, description below, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, Mark Yodius Riley, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me on the internet at Riley Around, R E I L L Y Around. We'll see you there. Thank you again for joining us. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 200,000 faster than we got to 100, but we need you guys to be part of the conversation. So if you stumbled upon this show because you're curious about it and you want to hear us talk about it every week, please do so. I also talk about pop culture, movies, TV shows all week long until we get to Tuesday. So Make sure you do that. Hit that button. I want to thank our guests, both Pavel and Mark Riley. Thanks for joining us on the show here today. We'll see you on the flip side. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. It's a big thing. We'll see you later. Bye.